Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Myself Kuhu Sharkar and in this video I am going to talk about Russian formalism. Here I am going to start a new series of literary theory. I Some months ago I started series of literary theory by, but then I could not finish the whole series. So here I want to kick start the uh, series of literary theory. It will be helpful for uh, B-set exam and also for net set and gate exam. So today in this series, the first video will be on Russian formalism introduction. Okay. So before going into Russian formalism, I want to introduce the theory formalism because both this theory, Russian formalism and new criticism came from formalism. So what... Uh, was the main agenda of formalism theory so let's know it in the literary theory formalism refers critical approaches that analyze interpret and evaluate the inherent features of a text so to in to interpret analyze and evaluate the features of a text what formalists do they focus on the form of a text before that before that uh, the critics or the literary critic uh, criticism or literary critics they focus on the historical background on the biographical background but formalists what they do they focus on the form of the text they focus on the structure what grammar what figure of speech is used in a text they looked at okay these features not only include grammar syntax but also literary devices such as meter and figure of speech so who what figure of speech is used what meter is used they only focus on that the formalist approach reduces the importance of text historical background biographical background and cultural context so they totally reduces the importance of historical biographical and cultural context in earlier days what we do when we try to interpret the text we first we first look that uh, the biographical background of the author the historical background of the text uh, in what context the text uh, text was uh, was written so that we can understand that uh, the meaning of the text we try to interpret the text by looking at the historical background and biographical background but these formalist theories they totally reduce the historical and biographical background they only focus on the structure on the form they only focus on the uh, text itself okay in new criticism also they say that the text is, uh, text is autotelic they uh, try to focus on close reading so from uh, formalism the two theories emerged uh, two theories emerged which is new criticism and formalism and russian formalism so let's uh, know about it okay so this picture i took from google because it is very useful so here um, we can see the similarities and dissimilarities or differences of new criticism and formalism both these theories uh, reduce the importance of historical background and biographical background they said that there is no importance of looking at the um, historical and biographical background of the text you, you should only focus on the text itself itself but uh, both these theories had differences also what are they first new criticism first russian formalism was a school of literary criticism in russia so it's a literary criticism in russia from the 19 1910s and 1930s whereas new criticism whereas new criticism emerged in america new criticism was a formalist movement in literary theory and uh, that dominated america American literary criticism in the first half of the 20th century. So it emerged in America, America. Okay. It is a Russian literary movement and it is an American literary movement. Russian formalists believe that there is a distinction between form and content. So whereas Russian formalism, they focus on the, uh, they focus only on the form 
न्यू क्रिटिसिजम दे फोकस ऑन द फॉर्म एंड कंटेंट दे फोकस ऑन बोथ ओके सो रासिवायरस रासियन फॉर्मलिज्म बिलीव दैट देयर इज अ डिस्टिंक्शन बिटवीन फॉर्म एंड कंटेंट एंड देयर फोकस वाज ऑन द फॉर्म और स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ए टेक्स्ट ओनली फोकस दे फोकस ओनली ऑन द फॉर्म और ट्रक्स और स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ए टेक्स्ट रेदर देन इट्स कंटेंट न्यू क्रिटिसिज्म बिलीव दैट द फॉर्म एंड कंटेंट आर कंटेंट ऑफ द टेक्स्ट आर क्लोजली कनेक्टेड सो न्यू क्रिटिसिज्म बिलीव दैट द फॉर्म एंड कंटेक्स्ट आर कंटेंट आर टोटली इंटरकनेक्टेड एंड यू कैन नॉट एनालाइज इट सेपरेटली सो दे बिलीव इन फॉर्म एंड कंटेंट बोथ बट रशियन फॉर्मलिस्ट दे ओनली बिलीव ऑन फॉर्म दिस इज द मेन डिफरेंस बिटवीन न्यू क्रिटिसिज्म एंड न्यू क्रिटिसिज्म एंड रशियन फॉर्मलिज्म एंड अदर डिफरेंसेस आर रशियन फॉर्मलिज्म इमर्ज इन रशिया एंड new criticism emerged in america so after uh, finishing of all these russian formalist i will go uh, for new criticism okay so now let's know what is russian formalism russian formalism is a school of literary theory and criticism that flourished in russia around 1915 it emerged in opposition to abstract literary theories with the goal to develop a scientific basis for the study of literature especially poetry so it emerged in opposition to abstract literary theory and it only focus on uh, on the um poetry especially poetry and it uh, it took a scientific approach to look at the text the two major schools of russian formalist are uh, moscow linguistic circle and opoyaz uh, the full name is the society for the study of poetic language so now no uh, sorry now no who are the russian formalist they are this is very important because uh, most of the time they gave uh, some questions like um, choose the odd on uh, odd one out so viktor slaivovsky yuri tayanya tayanyanov vladimir prop boris ekimbam roman jacobson he is very much important um, theorist then boris tomasovsky and grigory gukosovsky okay please note down this name Uh, there are other uh, russian formalist also but these are important so there are three formalist school and what are they you have to note down it also first is the moscow linguistic circle second is the society for the study of poetic language which is in brief opoyas and the third is the prague linguistic circle okay so first uh, let's know about the moscow linguistic circle moscow linguistic circle was formed in 1915 and it considered to be the starting point of formalism prominent theorists like roman jacobson osip brick boris uh, tomasovsky were the members of this group so it was formed in 1915 and it has the importance because it consider, considered as the starting point of formalism then opoyas it was founded in 1916 viktor slaivovsky boris uh, ekinbam and yuri tainyanov were among the leading figures of this group okay then the prague linguistic circle the prague linguistic circle founded in 1926 by expatriate russian formalist in prague along with the says literary Uh, scholars like rene welek and zen mukorosovsky the first president was vilem mathesius and roman jacobson and nikolai all nikolai uh, trubetskoy was also important figure of this uh, group of this circle so when these uh, russian formalist emerged in russia um, in the soviet the leaders the political leaders they find it very much uh, irritating because their approach they only focus that you do you should not look at the historical background on the biographical background so they think that uh, they thought that this approach should not be spread uh, 
because um, it will it will uh, reduce their political view or it will affect their political view or political approach so therefore they try to um, they try to reduce their um, their school they try to um, they try to make them flee from Russia okay and therefore the Prague, Prague linguistic circle was founded uh, by the expatriate Russian formalists they flee from Russia and made this Prague linguistic circle um, um, in another place okay so let's see about uh, more of them more of the thing the development of Russian formalism largely coincided uh, with the time of political upheavals in Russia. As I said, that the development of Russian formalism largely coincide, uh, coincided with the time of political upheavals in Russia. Many of the theorists of the movement had to flee, so they had to flee from Russia from soviet regime and some of their important works were written in exile so th these uh, these works which now are the important text in uh, russian formalism they have to write it or uh, they have to wrote it in exile because they have to flee from um, soviet so let's know about some important terms of Russian formalism and what are they? To understand the theory, you have to know the important terms of Russian formalism. And what are they? First is defamiliarization. So Russian formalists uh, use the term defamiliarization. What is it? Defamiliarization is one of the key theories of formalism. So it is one of the key theories of formalism developed by Viktor Slyvosky. It, it was developed by Viktor Slyvosky. Slyvosky described the concept using the Russian word ostreni, which translates as estrangement or making strange. So it means making strange. Defamiliarization is the technique of describing something in a strange manner that allows the reader to perceive it in a new ways. In new ways, defamiliarization helps us pay attention to commonplace things that we fail to notice because they are too familiar to us. So, defamiliarize means when the authors, the writers, defamiliarize the ordinary thing, like what the authors or writer do they take the story they take some event or incident some ordinary or familiar thing uh, like uh, someone kill someone right some uh, uh, some villain kill the hero or kill a ordinary man or a good man some bad man kill a ordinary man but how the writer the author um, write about it he just First, defamiliarize the whole thing. Sometimes some story start in media days, mean in middle. So why the writer write in middle? So that it it gives us the curiosity. It makes us think that what is happening, what is going to happen next, right? Uh, like the uh, Dostoevsky in the Crime and Pan Punishment, he can say that uh, Raskolnikov he murdered the lady. He can only say if you if you see it in a news you can see is that uh, a, a young man he uh, murdered a young a lady a old lady but what um, Dostoevsky did he just uh, he just explain or describe the whole murder in a in a very uh, interesting way in a very detailed way so that we can feel that what is happening what is happening there so he just defamiliarize it therefore the uh, the author the writer they always try to defamiliarize the thing and make it new right then the next term is foregrounding it is also important foregrounding what is mean 
the term foregrounding is borrowed from art and criticism art criticism where it is used to differentiate the striking aspect of a painting or an image from its background in literature foregrounding is used to call attention to something or to make something stand out foregrounding in literature is to make something so prominent in the narrative that it dominates dominates the reader's perception simply put foregrounding is used to make something hard to miss writers use devices such as parallelism alliteration metaphor so on to achieve the, achieve this effect so it uh, by using this metaphor this alliteration parallelism writers make it so something that it can be stand out from the ordinary things so it is called foregrounding okay then the most important um, term is plot and story so what is a uh, story and what is a plot if you if you going some somewhere and you see a, an incident that uh, a car crashed you after coming back you reported that i was going and then i saw a car crashed and a with a bicycle and the uh, person who is uh, who was on bicycle he died right but if you write it uh, in a story you can start it in mid in uh, middle you can give it a tragic uh, consequence a tragic conclusion you can uh, make all these things right so victor slavsky made the popular formalist sorry popular formalist distinction between plot and story what is plot and what is story story is a linear thing and when you give it a, a, a when you you told it, it uh, tell it in a episode wise it you give it a plot you give this incident a plot so he gave it a distinction between plot and story also known as sujet and fabula so it is also known as sujet sujet mean plot and fabula mean story story fabula is the natural sequence natural linear sequence of the uh, events taking place in a text the plot or sujet is the order in which these events are presented in the work so in which sequence you can start it in middle you can start it by saying that uh, that you uh, or the savior you see it fast or the car uh, came fast or the bicycle came fast so it is upon you it's it's upon you how can you tell the story so the story um, how can you arrange the whole event it's upon the author right so it is common for the plot of fiction narratives to diverge from the actual chronological sequence you can make it you can make it by your own the chronological sequence of the story it wants to tell the reader slavsky used the distinction between plot and story often stylized plot and story or sujet and fabula to emphasize the importance of the form how far the form of a text succeed to express the story and amount the attention of the reader has to pay uh, in order to understand it so by by doing this you also defamiliarize it right you uh, you uh, arrange it in a new way you um, uh, you arrange the you uh, reduce the chronological uh, order you uh, change the chronological sequence and you make it make it new in a new way right so uh, it is called when you make it new you give it a plot it is called a plot or sujet and story the story is the uh, what the real thing happen then the literariness the important term literariness what is literariness the formalist sorry okay sorry the formalist saw these techniques and devices as working towards what they call literariness so up by giving the it a new plot by giving it by defamiliarize it by foregrounding it what you did you give it a literariness you give it a aesthetic uh 
so they called it literariness the formalist used the idea of literariness to differentiate the literary language from practical use of language so it differentiate the ordinary language and the language which we see in the in the text or in the um, literary text whereas the main function of ordinary language is for us to communicate so the main uh, function of the ordinary language is only to communicate with each other the purpose of literary language is not to make reference to the external world instead it draws attention to itself the linguistic feature within itself by the same token the formalist believe that the general rules of linguistic did not apply to literary language so the general rule that subject or uh, subject verb predicate it cannot be applied in literary language you can you can um, write it from obje, object verb or object verb or subject you can use verb first it up it's upon you right like um, when i taught my student the julia caesar there are many uh, many sentences where the uh, the where brutus or cassius can only say that we can we are going to die the the death is near but they use so much so the language and it is so much so beautiful it make it defamiliarize you have to think that what they trying to say oh the sun is set now uh, we are going to die they use symbol like the crows are are up, upon our head so it gives us the hint that something uh, omen something ominous going to happen right so that's all i hope i can make you understand uh, some of it so thank you for giving your time and if you like this video please like and subscribe my channel so that you can be updated so thank you